Bank on you. You don't need an advisor. You need a financial education overhaul. By Jeremiah J. Brown. Narrated by Dallin Bradford. Bank on you. You don't need an advisor. You need a financial education overhaul. What can I teach you about money? Why should anyone listen to me? I've asked myself this question many times. Through examining the decision of whether or not I am the right person to share financial knowledge, I decided to conduct research on the number of millionaires in the world who obtained their wealth through inheritance, and what the qualifications are for being considered self-made. After all, what differentiates me from someone who successfully accomplished the task of accumulating massive amounts of wealth starting from zero? Well, here is what I found. Two-thirds of people who accumulated massive amounts of wealth actually inherited it. Yes, that is 66% of total millionaires and billionaires in existence. This leaves us with one-third of the wealthy population who are considered self-made, which is still not terrible. Criteria of being self-made. Become rich by own efforts or increase the amount acquired through inheritance by two times or more. Case in point, Donald Trump. The reality and beauty of learning is you don't need to learn how to drive from a professional race car driver in order to excel at driving. In many cases, you can learn how to drive from someone who's gone through a similar process and who can relate and understand where you've been and where you're going. The same rules apply in learning about money, how it works, and how to build wealth. Financial literacy is not a skill, people. It's a lifestyle. So, why not me? Results of Popular Financial Rhetoric Advice Close to 30% of households 55 and over have no retirement savings or pension. Smart assets. 62% of Americans have less than $1,000 saved for an emergency. Market watch. Nearly nine-tenths of people worldwide are not happy with their jobs. Forbes. 157 million Americans have credit card debt to pay off. CNBC. One in three Americans have nothing saved for retirement. E-Trade. Americans hold over $1 trillion in credit card debt. Federal Reserve. 44 million have student loan debt outstanding. CNBC. Eight out of ten Americans live in debt. CNBC. Preface. It is 7.30 a.m. L.A. time. I am driving apprehensively through Skid Row as I race to my morning meeting in downtown Los Angeles with an angel investor to pitch a technology product that I developed. Sprinting through yellow lights and struggling to get to my destination on time, I awkwardly come to a quick break at a red light. Looking to my left out of the driver's side window, I noticed a homeless woman approaching, asking for change. I politely rolled down my window and gave her a few bucks. By this time, the light turned green, indicating the continuation of my current destination. I rolled up my window and continued my commute. But as she began to fade into my rear view, something dawned on me. Did she have any debt? I always wondered why society often frowns upon the homeless. We look at a homeless and economically deprived person and subconsciously analyze and judge their socioeconomic status. No job, no income, no debt. Wait, no debt? Yes, that is correct. The average homeless person has no debt. But why is this so significant? After all, even with our five- or six-figure debt load, there is income coming in to supplement it, right? The average American household has over 15000 in credit card debt and over 130000 in total debt and growing. The reality is, we live in an illusion of wealth, while the homeless live in the reality of their financial situation. If you understand how our monetary system works, if you don't, read my book, Financial Freedom, My Only Hope, then you know debt is an intrinsic part of our economy and is the steam that keeps this economic train moving. But here is what worries me regarding homeless people reflecting financial reality. If there is interest due on every dollar in existence, 
What happens to our system if the Fed curtails or completely stops its fiat currency printing? It is actually quite simple. We would probably have to move into the tent next door. Since there is payment due every month on every dollar ever created, along with new currency replacing old currency, which creates inflation, stopping the creation of new dollars in order to pay for old dollars will cause a deflationary event and collapse the entire economy. This means that our monetary system is designed to require everlasting debt creation just to continue. With this universal law regarding how money works, which is embedded within the fabric of our system, how is it that we rely on contrary financial advice, such as saving, paying down debt, and submitting our money to financial experts who will utilize this universal law of leverage in hopes of producing high and even infinite returns on our money? What if I told you that, even with all of the antiquated financial information and advice given to you by top-tier financial experts and economists, they are not responsible for this economic disparity? We are. We know that something is terribly wrong within our economy and financial systems. We question the massive printing of fiat currency, the digital printing of the fractional reserve system, rising prices of everyday goods and services, and even the astronomical cost of our basic necessities, food, education, shelter, etc. Yet there is one catalyst that we avoid questioning in the first place. Whether because of our sheer ignorance, indoctrination, or acquiescing to the economic mechanism at hand, we never ask, why do we have to pay to be alive to begin with? Unfortunately, once something is ingrained into society's thinking and way of life, it's almost impossible to reevaluate antiquated methodologies such as trading paper for real value and to reimagine what a fair economy looks like. Oddly enough, we are obliviously participating and living in this people farm that is managed by the system of debt slavery whereby all the inhabitants are forced to strip mine the earth around them in order to collect the paper they need to pay to be alive. But at what cost? I don't think any solution and financial advice is that simple. However, if you're going to participate in this game and wonder how to build more wealth, then the solution will be simpler than answering this question. In this book, I intend not only to debunk the over-the-counter mainstream financial information and advice frequently handed to the masses, but offer real-world solutions for beating this game of financial chess, even on a shoestring budget. If you are interested in producing an infinite return starting from a place of zero, or wherever you currently are financially, then read further. It will shift your perspective about the financial information normally given, and allow you to start amassing wealth like the wealthy. Let us begin. Introduction The key to financial freedom is to use an investment that grows your income, not your savings. The cosmic irony puzzles me. There are countless of financial professionals and experts, combined with a sea of financial resources available. However, the income gap and wealth disparity continue to climb to the highest levels not seen since the Great Depression. It's almost as if there is a more intrinsic factor plaguing people from achieving financial success. Are higher forces or the powers that be amassing wealth at our expense? Pun intended. Possibly. However, I believe there is an insidious stealth engine spearheading this. The engine of too much of the same financial information being offered by our mainstream media. Things like, slash your credit cards, max out your 401k, hand your money over to a financial expert, look the part, wear your money on your sleeve, literally, your house is an asset, student loans are good debt, blah, blah, blah. Financial fast food. The reality is, when it comes to advice about improving our finances, we are actually drowning in a sea of information. However, all of the information seems to be backed mostly by rhetoric and popular consensus of practices of wealth building. It is almost as if the only solution to becoming wealthy, outside of the obvious, entertainer, athlete, actor, etc., is to retire your money and wait until you're old and wrinkled to recoup your investment. I believe this is mediocre financial information, or what I refer to as financial fast food living well below your means, blindly trusting your money to the markets, and hopelessly waiting until you're old to become a millionaire sounds more like a financial uncertainty than plausible advice. This kind of cheap and convenient mass information 
is exclusively for the masses, similar to McDonald's. The difference is the box of goods we're sold is for financial education instead of cheap, questionably nutritious food. The result? Take a look around you. There is that MBA graduate still living at home with his parents, that Uber driver who is balancing two jobs and still needs another gig in order to stay afloat, that 60-something-year-old who has to continue to work even when she should have retired a long time ago. These are the consequences of following the ubiquitous and antiquated financial advice in our new economic world. If there is a ton of accurate financial information out there, then why is close to 80% of the population living paycheck to paycheck? And why is it that although the average U.S. salary is $68,000, more than half of the people have less than $1,000 in total savings, 57%? The real question isn't, why don't we have information available about how to care for our personal finances? Rather, we need to question, is this the right information being given to us? If the information given to us is correct and easily available, why are we not motivated to do what we know we should be doing? Yes, I am challenging us, from the highest income earners to the average person on a modest salary, even the person with too much month at the end of their money or no income at all. Of course, there is no single answer for this. Most people are not motivated to save money or invest, but to spend it on emulating the lifestyles of the people they admire, whether this means eating at the same restaurants, wearing the same clothes, or driving the same cars as their idols and influencers. Advertisement companies, along with the media, play a huge role in this irrational form of consumerism, from determining the latest trends to glorifying how the rich live and spend their money. It almost seems as if people are being robbed of the motivation to do things the right way simply because of the financial distraction to stay current and keep up with the Joneses. Don't believe me? Allow me to ask you the following questions. 1. Do you feel as if you must have the latest smartphone, the latest 50-inch television, or a luxury car with built-in Wi-Fi connectivity? 2. When a person moves into a house with an outdated kitchen, let's say from the 1980s, is the key motivation to update it because today granite countertops are the new standard? Whether or not you are convinced by these sample impulse-related questions representing our inundation in the world of mass consumerism, I am sure you understand where I am going here. The beliefs that have been subconsciously ingrained in our minds create a never-ending cycle of consumerism. If you want to beat this financial deception and achieve real wealth, then it is imperative that you learn something fundamentally different about money. Remember, you can't change your financial situation living by the same information you had before opening this book. The Shocking Truth I find it extraordinary when people have their first liquidity event and obtain capital, whether through a tax refund, income from a sale of company or property, signing a major contract, suit, receiving an advance, or through receiving inheritance money, and they blow it all on pure consumption to look rich and invest in things that financial experts deem an asset. The truth is, if we don't come clean about the abundant financial rhetoric out there, which, statistically proven, is not working for the majority, and come up with real-world solutions to help us create infinite returns and build wealth, even with a small budget, then I'm afraid the wealth and income disparity that we see in the world will only rise. This is where I come in. Whether through sharing my personal experience or what I've learned through the mentorship of millionaires, I will reveal the financial knowledge that can help you go from zero to infinite, especially with your investment returns. So, without further ado, let's get right into What is an infinite return? When your principal is no longer included with your investment. When you are able to produce cash flow forever. When you can mass produce and scale a product or service with little to no money invested. When your money starts working for you. Are you ready to start producing infinite returns? Please continue. Chapter 1 Equity is the Holy Grail. Is patrimonial the new capitalism? We are going to get right into it. What I am about to reveal may be viewed by some as a financial watershed moment, 
the kind of esoteric information that could explode like a supernova in the brain. Nearly six centuries after Johannes Gutenberg devised the first printing press, it's still possible for a subtle nuance, such as ink on a page, to shake the very foundation, disrupt antiquated philosophies, unravel ideologies, and arm people with the knowledge needed to combat insidious powers that have robbed them of the ability to achieve economic freedom and prosperity on this planet. What I am referring to is a future governed and dominated by inherited wealth. This is the future of patrimonial capitalism. Two-thirds of all wealth is intergenerational. CNBC study.